Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I've been playing around a little bit with the controller and in this video I want to update the controller a little bit. Before I used uh, collisions to detect if you're grounded and now I'm using raycast. As you can see in this video, um, there's these yellow lines. They're checking if I'm actually on the ground and this one in front is actually checking if I'm, oops, if I'm on a wall or not. And so I made several changes and by doing those changes, I'm now ready to also wall jump, which I will show in the next video. And in this video, I would like to get the character ready for the wall jump. All right, great. So this is the new character and this one is the before. And I just want to show you the changes uh, which I've made. So if you go in the old character or your character right now, uh, the jump is a little bit different. I had here one collision uh, to go back to the start. I've integrated it in this one. There's a collision to the event there. And then it brings it back. And as you can see, I have here a set animator bool for the grounded part. And this I actually want to get rid of. I don't want to have a grounded bool. Also not here. And I also don't want to have a trigger for the jump anymore. I'm going to remove all those triggers. And I'm just going to leave the rest as it is for now. And what I'm going to do here is going to add a FSM, which is the ground check. Ground check FSM. And the first state will just be check for ground. I'm going to use the Raycast 2D action here. And when sliding up, um, I'm going to set the space to world. Um, the direction should be minus 90 in the Y axis. And the distance, only a very short distance, 0 0.8, should do it. And I don't want to hit event. I want to store um, when I hit something. And let's call this grounded. And the moment I hit something, it's grounded. But what am I hitting is going to define, I'm going to define a layer mask. I'm going to put here one. Oops, it's down. And here I will have ground. As you can see, I also have one is a wall, which I also set up. And here you can put the layer to ground and the tag also to ground. Right, going back to the layer, always lock. Um, let's also debug. Then you can actually see the line when uh, in game. And I want, to, of course, every repeat interval. So I'm going to just check every frame if I'm grounded or not. And then I'm going to add a set animator bool. And the bool is here not fixed yet, but let's already call it grounded. And the value is the grounded, which I created before the store did hit. This variable, which is a bool, is grounded. And I'm going to set the animator bool to grounded. Going to the animator, uh, in the animator, I'm really sorry, this is not the old one, but what I want to do here is instead of the jump trigger which i have before i removed that one and i made actually a dash trigger and what else i did was that from any state to go to jump the only thing i want to have here is that grounded is false so also when i'm falling then i will play the jump animation and I also added here on wall falls because I also made a on the wall um, animation. So what I want you to add are several things. Speed is staying the same. Grounded has to be added. It's a bool. On wall is a bool. Um, I made a dash, which is a trigger, and a wall jump, 
which is also a trigger. So please add those if you want to keep up with this video series of making a wall jump. Um, in the animator of this player, I what I did for the dash, I added this and maybe let's go on the on the new one. And for the dash, what I did here was to add the sword when I dash and I made a box collider, which is a trigger, which I can use later for damage. So what I did was I will enable my, my character to dash and do damage. That's what I did here. I also added a on wall. There was this one frame which looks like this. I think it is in the night and it's a cast which looks like it's holding on to something. This one or this one. Oh, uh, this one. So I'm using this one so it's holding to the wall. And for the wall jump, I use this one, uh, cast 02. I'm just being creative with what's available in this one. So I had the wall jump there. And in the animator, it's important to go the transition on wall, grounded false, and on wall true to the wall jump. I'm just using the trigger wall jump. For the dash, I now use the, the trigger dash. They all have no exit time here. And from these transitions, I go back to idle or running. And you have to use this kind of setup that grounded is true, on wall false, um, and speed is less than 0 0.1, which is fine. You could also perhaps use here on wall true as well. It doesn't matter because the only difference is that when I'm on the ground next to the wall, it will still have this hanging animation or idling. This is the choice you can have there. Um, for the running, it's then the speed greater um, on wall false, grounded true. From the wall jump, similar story. Speed greater, grounded true, on wall false. From the dash, I just had um, speed greater than 0 0.1. And I'm not using ground here for whatever reason, because it's just a dash trigger. All right, so setting that up. Good, let's go back to the player. And sorry for this video, it's a little bit mixed up, but there's just some small things we need to do. So the ground check every frame, set animator bool on every frame, because then in the animator, it will actually say it's grounded or not. And by doing so, you don't have to put a trigger anymore when jumping. As you can see, as you can see, the line here is in the wrong direction or it's not long enough. <laughs> so that's why it uh, doesn't see that it's grounded. So let me just fix this really quick. Um, let's just do two here once. Just uh, want to find out what's wrong. Did I point it in a wrong direction? Uh, now it's here. It started at the top here and, and ah, there we go. Um, sorry. Let me just... Uh, just put 0 0.8 and from game object and then just specify the particle spawner of the jump because all right let's actually just do the spawn particle spawner of the dash which is in the middle of the character and now the raycast will go from this point and before it started of course here at the top let's have a look once more there now you can see that the yellow line is here down 
and it should be grounded now. But the animator is somehow having issues. And the reason for that is to make sure that the set animator bool is on the sprite and then it's grounded and then it's true. Sorry about this. And now you can see that it's working. And when I fall now, let's say from the platform, it will also go into the jump animation. So this is a little bit smoother than using the collisions. And within the, let's say the jump, not luck, the jump here, I'm using the collision to the event on the ground. So let's get, go back into the jump. This is still fine. But what you could also do here is do again the bool and then just do a bool test. So check if the, um, let's say, bool test. And then you can get the variable, but then of course you have to get again, get FSM bool. Whoops. And you can just get the FSM bool here on ground check, rival name grounded, store it again in grounded. There. And then you don't have to have to do the collision. And the bool test is then just grounded. If true, then you go finished. So in that, in that way, you could remove this collision as well. It's up to you. The collision also works. But I just wanted to show you what you can do. Let's just remove it for now. And one thing I also want to do is set up the uh, wall check. And this I want to do in the direction of the player. And because I actually only want to have a raycast in the direction where I'm looking. So when I'm walking to the right, I want a raycast cast out to the right. And here I'm going to go again with the raycast 2D. And I'm going to specify the owner. I'm, I'm just going to do the, um, the dash lock. Particles one of the dash. And that's good. The direction is in this case on the X 60 straight line to the right distance 0 0.5. And please play with this and check. That's why I said always make this debug so you can actually see the lines and see if they're hitting something. And I want to store this in a new variable and let's just call it wall. And here I can go again, set animator pool. I haven't finished here, sorry. Add one more layer there. And here I'm going to put the wall layer. So I need to tag the, let's say, the, the, the areas in which I want to allow the wall jump with the wall. Good. And to repeat in false one, debug on. And here I'm gonna go to the sprite and on wall, which is the pool here, is then marked. And we're gonna do this every frame. And the value is wall, the value which I made there. Now I will just copy this and this to left. And then the only thing I want to change here is the minus 60. And as you can see, yes, now a super long laser. I think I didn't uh, change <laughs> the value. So by the way, with this laser, you can also shoot stuff. So if you want to set this up, um, let's go here. Let's have a look. The distance is 0 0.5 and the space is the world. Sorry, not self here as well. World. 
Great. And then let's check again. And as you can see, I now have this line here, which is a little bit out of the collider. This is important that the raycasts are not inside your collider because then they won't hit anything. And as you can see now, the wall is false. And, and now I'm on the wall. And now this character cannot wall jump yet, but you can see that he's trying to grab onto the wall, which is the, the animation effect. And then while doing the wall jump, I will set up a whole wall jump in the next video where I'll just make the animator quickly. So yeah, sorry for not having a full video yet. Just stay tuned in the next video. I will post it right away, uh, hopefully to get you set up for your wall jump.